The Ukraine war and scramble for non-Russian energy sources has set back global efforts to decarbonize. Finnish company Vatsila has this week turbocharged plans to develop engines that run on fossil-free fuel with the opening of a $270 million innovation hub. Earlier I spoke to CEO Hakan Agnaval. We are focusing on decarbonizing both the maritime and energy industry, uh, introducing new fuels, sustainable fuels, uh, introducing digital solutions, and, and this technology hub that we have inaugurated. This is where we, it's a major center for our R&D, for our engineering development going forward. We need to move with speed. And then you need to cooperate between different uh, parties to, to accelerate. So what are the signs we're seeing from the energy crisis at the moment? Are we seeing a spike in interest in renewables or a retreat back to fossil fuels? Now, I, I think short term, of course, people are looking at, you know, how do we secure uh, the supply of fossil fuels? But mid to long term, I think these high energy prices and, and some, of the geo, some of the geopolitical tensions will lead to an acceleration of uh, the, de the decarbonization, an acceleration of, of a growing sustainable energy generation. A lot about wind, a lot about solar. Um, so, so we will see a positive development going forward for sustainable energy. Vatsila me mentions marine transportation quite a lot in your literature and so on. Uh, what's the dilemma with marine transport? It uses certainly a lot of fossil fuels to function, doesn't it? But it's completely essential to the way the world works. It is. And, and I think when we look at the maritime industry, it is starting its decarbonization. It will accelerate, driven both by regulatory, uh, new regulations coming in, driving uh, down carbon intensity, but also by market forces, because we see a market for green transport evolving. Lifestyle brands, industrial companies is looking for green transport, and that will drive also the, the demand for sustainable green fuels going forward. A lot of this technology is out there, a lot of good research is being done, but the real challenge, presumably, is upscaling, getting society, getting infrastructures to adopt new technology. You're right. I mean, a lot of the technology is actually already here and or will be available in a very short future. But it's, for instance, we are providing the engines, you can say the heart, uh, but it's not sufficient to have a heart. You need to have a whole body. It's a whole ecosystem that needs to evolve. The fuel needs to be available. It needs to be distributed. You need to have the right vessels. So, so the key challenge is to mobilize the whole ecosystem and move together into a sustainable future. But I can clearly see when we look at the last, you could say, 18 to 24 months, there is a, certainly an acceleration going on. However, it will take time. I mean, if you look of a lifetime of a vessel, you're talking 20 to 30 years. So it, it, it's, it's, although it's accelerating, the, the transformation will take time. Which is more important, the private sector or government? I think the key thing here is private and public sector coming together. We need a regulatory context, but we also need private initiatives to drive the innovation, both in technology and services. So it needs to come together. We need to cooperate.